Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Drowning guests can be a lot of fun if you're in a sadistic mood, but if you want to actually beat a scenario, it's something you should definitely not do. Or is it? What if I told you that you can only beat this custom scenario called Hotel California if you drown guests? Let's start by analyzing this scenario and see what it's all about. The map is a mostly unremarkable desert island with a big hill in the middle and some small islands on the side. You own the entire map except for the hill in the middle and oddly enough 4 tiles very close to the park entrance including the one directly in front of it. That is not necessarily a problem as guests can still enter the park without any issues which is nice because in order to beat the scenario we need to get 5000 guests while keeping the park rating above 700 the entire time. Now is a good time to start building some rides to get those guests. We charge for the entrance here and the guests spawn with a minimum of 50 euros. To make sure that they have some money left over for stalls I won't charge more than 45. So far nothing special really happened until I ran out of money while building this corkscrew coaster. That is odd because there is nothing in this park that is expensive and we're charging enough for the entrance to make decent money. Except we do have one massive money sink and that is the loan of 2 million euros causing us to pay almost 2500 a month in interest. To prevent us from going broke I sold the corkscrew and put down a few micro coasters instead. At a bit over 1000 guests there is a new problem as we're no longer getting any new guests despite building more rides. This is because this scenario has harder guest generation enabled, so only rides that are over 600 meters long and have over 6 excitement attract guests beyond 1000. Advertising ignores this limit, but that's banned here as well. No problem, we'll just build this looping coaster design, which was specifically designed for scenarios with harder guest generation. This all works perfectly fine until June year 2, when it all goes to pot. The park rating is going down and if we're not able to raise it back above 700 again quickly the park will close and we will lose the scenario. The problem is that quite a few guests want to go home but can't. Guests cannot leave the park boundaries if they're in the park and since we don't own the tile in front of the entrance they cannot get onto that tile in order to leave the park. They can check out anytime they like, but they can never leave. This is a massive problem. After the first 25 lost guests, any additional ones will subtract 7 from your park rating. So if you have just 75 guests who want to leave, it already decreases your rating by 350. Not only does this become a big issue very quickly, it is also unrecoverable as leaving guests will never stop wanting to leave. And this happened at 1700 guests already, only a third of the way to the goal, so this is completely impossible. Unless we make sure that the guests never want to leave. There is a very useful trick for this, guests will always go on a free transport ride and if the queue line has TVs on every tile they will never get tired of waiting. Simply block the ride from ever going and you have a very effective universal guest trap. Let's build this trap in Hotel California and there are no transport rides available and we can't research any either. Alright, I guess we'll have to use other rides instead. It took quite a while before guests wanted to leave in the previous attempt, so this will probably still work quite well. The most important deciding factor for if a guest goes on a ride is the intensity rating. Guests have a preference that ranges from anything below 4 as the lowest to anything above 9 as the highest. The happier they are, the further they are willing to go outside of that range, up to a bit over 2 points. Therefore I'm building two wild mouse coasters, one with about 4 intensity which will accommodate most guests and one with about 8.5 intensity which is for the thrill seekers. They both have two stations and just one car, so after they have been around once to get the stats we simply enable synchronization and they will never depart again. 
To actually attract the guests, we will need to build a whole bunch of that looping coaster design we built earlier. They don't need to be accessible, so we'll just build them in the back of the park with a path for a mechanic to fix them in case they break down. The guests come in extremely unhappy, so in order to raise the park rating and to make them more likely to go on the rides, we'll use some entertainers to inject them with manufactured happiness. With the remaining bit of our starting money we will build one very tall rotodrop. This will contribute a lot to the maximum park entrance fee and allows us to immediately charge 50 bucks. And that pretty much is the setup of the park. If things go right we will make enough money from the park entrance to slowly build more looping coasters and wild mice coasters as the guest count increases. It may seem smooth sailing from here, but remember that guests are not guaranteed to go on one of these rides, and eventually some of them will want to go home. Once we pass 700 guests, this is exactly what we see. A few guests have had enough and want to leave. We need to get these guests out, otherwise they will destroy the park rating and make us lose. Luckily there is a way to get rid of guests without losing park rating, which is by throwing them into the void. We simply raise a bit of land and we aren't allowed to do that here. Okay, then we'll just build a ride underground to start building a path from there, except there is no place in the park with enough clearance to build a ride entrance or exit building. This means there is no way to void the guests. That leaves only one way for the guests to leave the park. Death by drowning. But won't that kill our park rating just as hard? It absolutely will, but only temporarily. When a guest drowns you lose 25 park rating, but this entirely recovers after only about a month. So we can simply drown a bunch of guests that want to leave until we reach a park rating of about 700, then wait a while and then do it all over again. As long as we can drown guests quickly enough to prevent the number of lost guests from increasing, we will keep the park rating high enough. It's really quite morbid, but the rest of the scenario consists of building looping and wild mice coasters, placing queue line TVs and occasionally drowning some guests to prevent the park rating from decreasing. I never imagined I would say those words, but somehow it actually works. Whatever outside forces decide your park rating, they forget accidental drownings in about a month while never forgetting about guests that are too stubborn to disobey a little fence and no entry sign. While building up the park it quickly becomes clear that the intense wild mouse coaster is not very popular, so before that queue line is even filled up I've already built 6 gentle wild mice. They are filling up really nicely and one mechanic is enough to keep them all running. Far away in the back of the park there is a whole bunch of looping coasters placed in a really unsatisfying pattern. I tried to align them nicely but I messed up somewhere and this chaos is the result of that. After 4000 guests the park rating doesn't easily bounce back to 999 after drowning some guests anymore which is caused by a greater number of guests wanting to leave. I'm not sure exactly why this is, but if it becomes worse it might become an actual problem. Other than that it's all going quite smoothly and we're nearing the goal of 5000 guests. Luckily the park rating is absolutely fine and in August year 4 we are just a few guests away from beating the scenario. In total we had to drown 159 guests in order to keep the park rating high enough. And a few moments later we indeed beat Hotel California, a scenario that's only beatable if you drown guests. Big thanks to Beaker on my discord server for creating this scenario. It was their idea to prevent the guests from leaving by not giving you ownership over the tile in front of the entrance and it's a really fun way to force you to think out of the box. To see how trapping guests can allow you to gain almost 5000 of them in a single year, click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.